So welcome back to another edition of Mock Draft Monday. And as you can see, I pre-recorded this earlier and I'm just going to kind of voice over it and kind of give my thought process, you know, as to what I was thinking while I was doing this. So I actually signed in to the website this time and I'm able to trade and, and do stuff like that. And just before, you know, I started, I wanted to make sure the trade option worked. And so that's what you see going on right here. But um, shortly, we'll get into the, the draft and I kind of talk you through what I was thinking as I was doing this. Uh, my initial thought was I was going to try to pause it every time, like, so I could try to get one of those premier tackles. Um, and really, I had to think about the fact that we had picked up, you know, had signed some guys. And so I, my thinking kind of went out the window initially because my initial thought was to pause it, trade up, and get Cross or Akeem, especially since Evan Neal was gone. But in the process of doing this, I remembered that we signed um, Moses. And so now I'm kind of perplexed as to what to do. And you'll see it kind of pause in a minute once I go through the trade. But you can see me offer our first uh, one of the fourth round picks, I think. Let me see. We'll see in a second. I'm trying to remember what I did. Did a third and a fourth for their first pick. And they didn't accept that. So I had to kind of reshuffle it a little bit. You see the offer offer of acceptance is low. Panthers denied my, my draft. And so what I eventually did was, and I don't know if it's going to sync up with me talking about it, I added a second for next year, and I got a seventh from them. So I took, uh, even though you see me adding a third, I think they're going to decline this one also. Oh, I added a six too. decline it so what did I do I'm trying to remember I know I added this, this second to move up and you know I'm a proponent of keeping picks and this kind of hurt my feelings to do this but it turned out you know I, it's, I think it's going to turn out for the better so we, we now have the six pick and again I was thinking I need to get a tackle and you see me bought the, bought the pick cross I had to think about it. We got a tackle. So now what do I do? What's the next biggest need that we have like immediately? And it was obvious. Edge. Guy that can play inside and outside. And so with the number six pick, you know, when you'll see it coming up, I picked Trayvon Walker from Georgia. And that's, that's me with just debating on what I should do. And I, I went ahead and picked uh, Trayvon Walker, Edge from Georgia. And though that trading of picks really was me forgetting that we had picked up um, a tackle in free agency already. So that's why that's why I was so hesitant on that pick right there. So and keep in mind, I'm thinking I'm thinking Ronnie Stanley's going to be healthy. I'm going in this saying Stanley's going to be healthy. So with Stanley Healthy, you got him on one side, Moses on the other, and you got some guys that could bag up, but maybe not fill in a great role, but we'll still address tackle, you know, later on in the draft. Not with a premier guy, because especially with us signing the guy we did. And maybe in real life, maybe we do select a premier guy. And you can see different people trying to get trades with me and whatnot. I think I did make one more trade, but it wasn't one I initiated. I think. We'll see. Let me speed this up a little bit for the sake of it. Alright. So now we're picking at 45. Let's see. New England's trying to trade. And did I trade this? I may have traded this pick. I'm trying to remember. I did. I accepted that trade and bounced back to 54. So I picked up another draft pick. And then, you know, I bounce back nine spots to pick 54 for us. Green Bay, nope, get out of here. I think I rejected two or three Green Bay trades. You can kind of see how the, the draft networks work if you have a, if you actually have a sign-in. So with this pick, I'm looking, wondering, thinking if I get Christian Harris, you know, that would be a good guy to go next to – um. Next to Queen. But Malik ain't really played himself out yet. So if I go Christian Harris, what does that say to Malik? So what's the next biggest need? We still old as heck. 
on the interior front line. And y'all know I love offense, but I I bowed to the dark side and went defense on with this pick also. I bowed to the dark side and went defense with this pick also with DeMarvin Leo from Texas A&M. So that's, as much as I love offense, as much as I am, build a wall around Lamar, <laughs> I went defense here. So we got an edge guy and an interior guy. And with uh, Walker, he could play interior some too. So... <laughs> As much as I'm build the wall guy for Lamar with this mock draft, I am not building the wall. But I'm still happy with the two picks so far. And speed it up so I can get up to our pick. You can kind of see the, the people going off the board, too. That way you can have an understanding of what I, what options I got, you know, when it's our time to pick. So I won't just give you a bunch of names out there and you kind of wonder why I did this or why I passed over this guy. or Because you could pause it at any time and see who's coming off the draft board. Yeah, I'm seriously considering, but I did. All right, so now we're picking at 110. Picking at 110 and... um. Looking at our list of needs over there and the people, that, the top guys on the board. I'm ser seriously thinking about Lindstrom. But now I'm thinking, like, maybe Macari goes in there and plays center. So do I want an interior O-line? We definitely need cornerback. But I want cornerback with size. I didn't want the, the, the two under six feet guys, which was uh, Britt Taylor and Wright. So I went with Martin Emerson, our SEC guy. That's 6'2 from Mississippi State. I wanted the guy with size to deal with the Receivers that have size. So now we're up again. Um, looking at edge, wanted to go with Sanders, but remember I already picked Trayvon Walker, so that kind of took Sanders out of my mind. I had already passed on Lindstrom. What'd I do? All right, now we're up again. I feel like I'm doing BPA at this point. I think Sanders is the best player up there. They give us, you know, you can have, because with, with Walker being able to play inside and out, I think Sanders is a pure edge, like a rush guy. And, and looking at that list of guys right there, I went with Sanders, man. Sanders as the, the BPA at that point. That's, that's where I went. And we got another pick right here, 128. And so now I'm thinking, I'm looking at our, our draft choices. Damian Pierce is really, um, I was really thinking about Pierce, but I thought about finally getting Lamar some help, and I went with the tight end from uh, Maryland. Now, again, I'm not going to pronounce his name. I can't pronounce his name. I keep messing it up. But now we're back up again. Damian Pierce is still there. We need help. You know, not knowing what our running backs are going to do or how they're going to come back. And so I, if I'm not mistaken, I went Damian Pierce right here, which I did. Right, let's fast forward because I got a while before we pick again. Oh, nah, we go. All right. So now I'm thinking about getting help for Lamar again. Got him a tight end with uh, Sanders as a really a fast guy. I think he was the fastest tight end at the combine, maybe the second fastest. Him and the guy from Virginia were pretty darn explosive at the combine. So now I'm going with the best receiver up there, and in my opinion, is Justin Ross. Get a size guy because we got smaller guys that can – can do, you know, do the shifty stuff, so to speak. We need a size guy. A guy that can be a threat in the red zone. And I went with Justin Ross right here. 6'3 from Clemson. Coming back off injury. But before he had that injury, was a, was a monster. It was a real monster for Clemson. And so this will be the second year off that injury. So hopefully he can get, he'll be 100% and he can return to that monster status that he used to have. But I, I went with Justin Ross here. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. Me trying to see what receivers out there. And really, to me, there's no choices. Justin Ross is, he's the guy. That's me trying to debate and talk myself in or out of the decision. But Ross is the guy. 
All right, let's see. Let me fast forward to the next pick. All right, here we go. We're picking at 170. And let's see what my thought process was here. I don't remember what I got. Let's see what I got. I got, I got to look at it and remember myself. Oh, this is why I got more offensive line help. I went Max Mitchell to to get a guy that actually that's not a swing guy, that actually a tackle and can be a backup tackle. You know, to Moses, to to um, Stanley, and to whoever else we decide to play a tackle. He can be a I want to say a swing guy, but he could be a developmental guy that maybe eventually comes in and play. And he only got he only has to focus at tackle. You don't have to try to be a guard, or he could just focus on being tackle, whether it be left or right. Learn the position, learn the nuances, and be there just in case something happens. So, I, you know, I, you'll see me pondering up and down, but I went with Mitchell um, in, in this pick right here. And again, me trying to talk myself out of it, going through the pros and cons. I went Max Mitchell, offensive tackle from Louisiana. ULL, the Raging Cajuns. Uh, let's fast forward to the next one. Shouldn't be very many more. I think it's one more. Cause I got that seven round pick from um, Carolina. Here it comes, two forty two. I know those are the guys we got so far on the left. I picked two forty two. I finally went back, and I think I went with, did I go with Ellis Brooks for competition at that linebacker spot alongside of Patrick Queen? Even though I had a chance to get the guy from Alabama earlier, um, I forget, Harris. I think I went with with Brooks here just to add some in, into that, some competition in there to make, not to add fire to it, to say, hey, we draft another linebacker, you know, Malik, hey, yeah, get your stuff together. Get your stuff together. And it gets us younger too because, you know, Bynes is, is aging out. The other guys are aging out. So, you know, maybe you have a three man rotation with with um with Malik and Queen, which Queen probably gonna be in a rotation. He's gonna be on the field. And maybe this guy just pushes Malik and brings out the best of him. But I went with the uh linebacker from Penn State here, and you'll see me going back up. Um Ellis Brooks. That was my pick. This is me just going, you know, trying to go through and do my due diligence at the at that point. No, I went with Campbell from Ole Miss. That's what I did. I went with Campbell from Ole Miss, but the same thought process to get some competition. That was my same thought process. I went with Cam with Campbell from Ole Miss. That's what that was my thought process. And y'all know my bias to SEC. I think that's why I flipped at the last minute because of the SEC bias. And you know, Brooks could have been a better prospect, but Ole Miss plays a better brand of foot, better, more talented football players than Penn State. Not saying Penn State sorry, but to play linebacker in the SEC, that's a daunting task. So but that, that was my last pick right there. You can see on the board right here, I went uh, first pick, pick six, traded up, got Trayvon Walker, which I think will solve some problems on the inside. Uh, got him a running mate in there, DeMarvin Leo. So if you get those two guys with Matt BK, um, Masoma Wolf is coming back. You got... um. Uh, let's see who, who we got on the edge. Kalea is probably gone. Um, Ellis is probably gone. You got uh, shoot, that's pretty much the rotation. If those guys be gone, you look at Matt BK, you look at um, Walker, you look at Leo, and um, and Wolf. That would be the, the guys that probably be in that rotation. Uh, got a cornerback because you know, our top two corners left the season hurt, so we got didn't get the didn't get sauce. I think picking him at six would have been too high. Stingley, I think picking him at six would have been too high. So, I, I you know, kind of passed on him to get Trayvon Walker. Um, got Emerson, a 6'2 guy, long corner. that can kind of give us, you know, some of the same things that – I ain't going to say he's – Sauce was 6'3". This guy's 6'2", so he can kind of maybe give us some of that same stuff. But, again, my SEC bias kind of trumps a lot of stuff. Uh, now, I went with Sauce's teammate here. Edge guy. So now if we can get pass rush with these these interior guys and these edge guys 
and still have a decent back end, we should finally start to create turnovers. Shoot. Uh, got Lamar some help finally at 128 with a tight end. So if we do stay with Roman's um, vault scheme and use them three, bring them three tight end sets back, this guy can kind of produce on the, the lines of um, Hayden Hurst. Uh, Damon Pierce are brought in just as a safety precaution because both running backs coming off um, uh, season in injury. So he's a he's a physical, tough runner that can get you those tough yards and get the edge a little bit. Justin Ross gives us a red zone threat. I uh, don't know how much he would play from 20 to 20, but uh, definitely could be a red zone threat and a blocker in the scheme we run, you know, the vault scheme. Uh, Max Mitchell, just some safety help at, at, at tackle in case some guys get hurt. And Chance Campbell, uh, uh, a guy that can maybe push Malik to to bring out the best of Malik. And if he don't, maybe he'll get in there and make some plays. So that's uh, Mock Draft Monday for, what is today, the 21st? Uh, 321 22 uh, you could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. I appreciate you guys for staying tuned. And uh, that's my draft Monday, man. See y'all soon. Uh, more draft videos coming.